This is my DX Commander Expedition antenna. There are many like it, but this is my own. And mine is different than yours. What's happening guys? Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike, you're watching KNMRD Radio Stuff. Last year, we did a mod to the DX Commander Expedition antenna where we put a 12 meter wire on here by using the feed point. Well, I was just on 30 meters the other day making all kinds of DX contacts on FT8 and realized, well, I don't have 30 meters on here. So today, I wanna see if we can get all bands from 40 through six on this DX Commander Expedition. So let's hop over on the bench and see what we can do. So here's the plan. Uh, these are the newer plates for the DX Commander Expedition that Callum sent me a while ago. And this is the new spreader with the notches so the wire can go in there. Well, what had happened on, uh, so last year, we realized that we could use the nut that connects the coax to this driven plate to use a 12 meter wire or whatever band you wanted, really. You could have done this with 30, but now we have an extra hole here on this plate as well as an extra hole here on the spreader. So I've got some spare parts and we are going to attach our 30 meter element right there. And we're gonna make uh, a spreader out of, uh, I went to Walmart and in the little home uh, section, they don't have the 88 cent cutting board anymore. I just spent like $2.77 on this, but we're gonna, we're gonna draw out some kind of spreader and go cut that and uh, get this tuned up and then we'll have an all band DX Commander Expedition. Well, 40, 20, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, and six, because somehow six is kind of resonant. You need a tuner, but my tuner on my 7300 tuned it up just fine at field day, and I was making all kinds of FT8 contacts on six meters with this very antenna. So, I guess I should have, every good ham needs to label things, right? So there's 30, and we'll go ahead and notate 30 on that plate as well. All right, brilliant. That part's done. We don't need to do anything to this. This is the upper spreader. Uh, I am gonna need to cut uh, a hole. I'll actually notch this out so I can, uh, I'll, I'll make notches like this. I'll probably just use my Dremel maybe. And uh, that way we can just slide the 30 meter element in there. So I'll just put a little for now, just to let us know we need to do that. So now for the top spreader, I mean, I, I kind of don't need anything really fancy. Really just about an inch high. Just kind of make a little square. Maybe I'll round this off. There will be our hole. And these holes are only about an inch off. So we could just do something kind of you know, there, cut that out. That can be our top spreader and uh, see how that goes. So now I need to go uh, raise up the mast outside and measure it. And then we can cut this out and drill it. So let's do that. All right, so here is seven meters. And I only need to go up uh, about a foot and I'm gonna make, you can see there's the, the next section there. So I'm gonna make the spreader hole so it stops right on this uh, section. And then I'll only need, oh gosh, maybe maybe probably eight, nine inches of doingy. Then it'll stretch because the, uh, the, the radiating element should be just a touch over seven meters. So we'll see how that turns out, but that's the plan. So now I'm just gonna measure this, see where we're at. And we got about seven sixteenths a hole that I need to drill in that plastic. And now we can cut this out and drill it and see how it fits.
Beautiful. Okay, now we need to drill a hole in the middle of this guy. So we'll use my precision eyes to gauge where the middle is, and we're gonna call it right there. All right, and this is gonna be seven sixty-fourths. God, the Imperial system is stupid. So we'll drill a little pilot hole there first. And then we will get our trusty seven, seven sixteenths, excuse me. All right, I need mince meat out of that. And then I need to drill a couple holes to hang the doingies. So actually, I just need to drill one hole through here to pass the 40 meter wire through and another hole for uh, one of the hooks for the doingy. I could just tie a knot too, but I've got I've got the little clips. Calum doesn't really do it this way anymore, but I've already got these clips on everything else, so we'll just keep it consistent that way. So these holes that hold the clips uh, are 17 64ths. We'll drill that out, and we can just drill them both the same. Start with a pilot hole. And the big money. I think that's the dullest blade in the set there. <laughs> All right. Let's go down to a quarter inch because that is <laughs> Harbor Freight drill bits for you. There we are. Quarter inch should be fine. Okay. Yeah, they're perfectly straight across from each other too, sure. And I also need to cut a hole in here and a notch, so let's do that. And then we can get our trusty Dremel out to just zip a hole in there real quick. It ain't pretty, but it's honest work. Well, it's no factory cut, but <laughs> that'll work. Now we have to make our radiating element. So uh, quarter wave is just a little bit over uh, seven meters. So we're gonna cut maybe, I don't know, longer than that. Maybe seven meters something, I don't know. And let's go, oh, We'll have a little bit of wiggle room. I'll go seven meters, 15 centimeters. And we cut. I've got some of these beads here and some uh, heat shrink. I'm actually going to put these on before I add the uh, connector. And that way we can label what band each wire is. So put some heat shrink on here first. So we're gonna double up on the heat shrink because these are gonna act as stoppers for the beads. And then add our beads. So that way it says 30, hopefully, yep. And then we repeat this process. Beautiful. Now it won't uh, slide off. Now I've crimped and soldered the connector on here. And as far as making the loop, uh, typically uh, Callum sends some glue line heat shrink to make this loop, but I've found in the Texas sun, these actually heat up and uh, fall out when you need it the most. So I've got some of these wire retention clips that I'm gonna use. I'm actually gonna put these on all the elements. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take all the glue lined heat shrink off uh, of all the loops and I'm gonna put these on. But for now, we're just going to unscrew this. So the wire goes in like such, make a loop. Actually, I'm gonna start at the bottom. And the nice thing about this, when you're tuning the antenna, in the past, I've just had to put like electrical tape or something around to, ho to hold the loop, but with these, you can just unscrew them and either lengthen or shorten them 
as needed. And because these uh, plates have notches in it now, you don't need to feed the wire through a hole like we did in the past. So um, hopefully this will be a good solution. But there's only one way to find out, and that's by doing it. So then we can just take a wrench and clamp that down a little bit. And that puppy ain't going nowhere. Now the last thing that I need to make before we put everything together is just a little bit of doingy. So we were about 12 inches from uh, where the top of the uh, radiating element should be to where uh, this should be sitting. So I'm gonna cut this for like, I don't know. I'm gonna cut this 11 inches because I need to make some uh, knots and things that'll shorten it. And we can always shorten this if we need to, but I don't want to have too much tension on this. I kind of would rather just have it um, be well, you know, perfect. So I'm going to feed this through. And then we're just going to tie a little pretzel knot here. Okay, that'll go in there. And then these clips should, there we are, clip in there. And then that will clip on that. Then we just need to put another one on this side. Pull that guy in. Get in there. Oh, that knot's big. All right, we got it, I think. So that'll be hanging down. And then here's our 30 meter element that'll just clip on there. And that's, uh, that's that. So now I'm going to go outside, I'm going to put the whole antenna together and we'll start tuning this up. Well, this could not have gone any better. <laughs> all my cuts were great, all my drills were great, everything's great. So here's the base plate, here you can see the 30 meter element, but we've got 17, 30, 20, 12, there's 10, and there's 40. So this thing is loaded up and we go all the way down here. We can see I put the metal clamps on all of the elements here. These are working great. I, th I think those are gonna work out really nicely. Here's 20 meters, then here's our middle spreader plate. And then here's where the 30 meter goes through. We can follow this wire all the way up to our little clamp there and our custom k MRD DX Commander spreader. Uh, the, the hole I drilled fit absolutely perfectly. It's like right on the uh, next thing there, perfect. And then it's coming, here's the 40 meter element coming down, and here's where it loops back down upon itself, but uh, there's the top of it. I don't go all the way to the tip. Uh, usually that's about four inches down from the tip, and I get, a, I get a really good tune there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up now and uh, make sure, tune everything. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna film that part, and I will come back and show you on the analyzer the results of what we've accomplished out here today. All right, so after probably an hour of fussing around, taking it down, putting it up, uh, checking SWR, uh, everything's looking pretty good. I did end up taking those metal clips off of the wires, and uh, I just put some zip ties on it for now. Uh, I, I still wanna find a better solution than the, the heat shrink, um, but maybe I'll just, I might just recut the wires, some of the wires, so I can have a little bit more wire folding back to get a better grasp on the heat shrink. I'm not sure about that. Uh, if you're in northern states, probably not a big deal, but it's 100 degrees out right now. Um, so I, I'm on the fence about what I'm going to do with that. But they, the metal definitely seemed to be reacting with some of the elements. Uh, so I, I just went ahead and took them off. I may revisit it in the future, but uh, it is 4th of July. We, I kind of am starting to see some rain clouds in the distance, so I want to get this taken down. But uh, I want to show you on the analyzer what we got. Everything's working. I still need to do a little bit of tweaking, but let's let's take a look at the analyzer. Okay, so we're gonna hit uh, ham here. Let's go down to 40 meters. It is a little windy, so this graph won't be quite as smooth. The, the SWR does move a little bit in the wind, so there's 40. Here's 30. It's looking a little wonky. 30 is still a little long. It's kind of right there. I need to cut off probably another inch or two, but still under 1.5 to one where we're at. 
Uh, so that was the goal. And yeah, you can see as, as the wind goes, uh, but when it's not windy, it's really flat like that. So, but the dip is a little bit low. 20 meters, um, 20 meters is acting kind of wonky now. I, I, overall, it looks like I lost a little bit of bandwidth and I'm not getting a really good curve. It's not that windy yet, but uh, still pretty good. But uh, I, might, I might end up recutting that element. 17 uh, should look good. There we are, yep. It's, it's somewhere down there, but it's, it's kind of windy because we got a storm coming in here. But 17 does look good, I promise. <laughs> it's just not on camera. <laughs> it's, it, the dip is around there. The SWR is really low. 15 looks pretty darn good. Can't complain with that. And I do have a 12 meter element on. Yeah, it's, it's getting all wonky, but 12 meters uh, is pretty good. Even though this doesn't really show it. <laughs> and 11 meters, you see me guys, not so much. 10 meters, I need to shorten a little bit. I think we lost a little bit of bandwidth on 10 meters but I'm more concerned about uh, kind of the lower portion where that is. So I'm gonna actually shorten this a little bit to move that dip down so I can get more in the FT8 portion and the, and the phone portion. And then six meters is actually not bad. We're under 3.1 across the entire band. I mean, there's all the way up in the FM portion. This is what a four megahertz wide uh, 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 band. So that's what I expect. I was doing some FT8 on six meters over field day. My radio will tune it, no problem. So that's what we're looking at for now.